the genuine article. Discussion and commentary based on articles from Jack. Hello, I'm Tony DeMaria, the editor of Jack, here with Inside Jack. And this morning I'm talking to Dr. Rodez Cabal. And, and Joseph is the director of the Cardiac Catheterization Laboratory at the Quebec Heart and Lung Institute. And he's the primary author on a, a very nice study that addresses the degree, the prevalence and degree and significance of left ventricular dysfunction that can accompany a percutaneous aortic valve implantation, or TAVI as it's come to be called. So, uh, Joseph, uh, let me ask you, what degree of biomarker elevation uh, is required before you would think that there's been some evidence of myocardial injury? Uh, in fact, uh, here in this study, uh, we, um, we measured the biomarkers of myocardial injury at baseline at several times after the TAVI procedure, and uh, we established as our upper limit, the uh, uh, usual upper limit that is used in, in the uh, in the uh, in our laboratory, this is uh, 0.04 micrograms liter for the, uh, the cardiac troponin T, and uh, 10 micrograms uh, liter for the CKMB, and we measured any degree of myocardial injury. Uh, we defined any degree of myocardial injury as any elevation of these biomarkers above these upper normal limits. Okay, so uh, even the least little bit of elevation was enough. So how prevalent was it that you had evidence of increased biomarkers uh, in the setting of TAVI? Mm -hmm. In fact, when you look at the cardiac troponin T, uh, was more than 95% of the patients, and this was irrespective uh, of the approach, transfemoral or transepical. And when you look at the CKMB, this was about 77% of the patients, more than 90% in the transepical group where you are uh, performing a direct puncture of the apex, and about half of the patients in the transfemoral group. Well, if it's so prevalent, does it have any significance if virtually everybody is having elevation of biomarkers? Mm -hmm. In fact, we, uh, we look at the, uh, uh, the potential uh, prognostic value of this uh, biomarker increase after the procedure, and we found that a higher increase in these biomarkers was associated with a le le less improvement in left ventricular ejection fraction at follow-up, and specifically uh, the cardiac troponin uh, T, or a higher increase in this biomarker was also associated with a higher cardiac mortality at midterm follow-up. So is, is there some level of biomarker elevation that really predicts a high risk of, of a low ejection fraction or an increased mm -hmm. mortality? For the ejection fraction, we found that uh, CKMB uh, that uh, was about three times the upper normal limit was associated with less improvement in left ventricular ejection fraction, and this cutoff was 10 times the upper normal limit for the cardiac troponin T. When we are talking about uh, cardiac mortality, these were the cutoff for the cardiac troponin T was more than 15 times the upper limit. 15 times. Yeah. So why, did the, why does myocardial injury occur? This is a, a very good question. Uh, uh, for the transepical approach, for sure, we are, puncture, uh, we are performing a direct puncture of the, of the apex of the heart, introducing large catheters uh, through the apex of the heart, and, and this, uh, for sure, is, uh, can be uh, induced some degree of myocardial injury, as we have seen. For the transfemoral patients, uh, is, uh, is less evident. We can, uh, there's always some kind of uh, severe hypotension and global ischemia during the procedure. You do the valvuloplasty. We induce rapid, in fact, we induce a ventricular tachycardia at least two times during the procedure. And uh, uh, we have, uh, we are also stretching the myocardial septum with the balloons and with the valve. And we cannot exclude neither the, the occurrence of micro, coronary microembolism. We have seen also in the, in the brain some, a lot of uh, cerebral emboli uh, associated with this procedure. And uh, we can speculate that maybe there are some kind of uh, coronary embolies that can occur. 
Well, very sobering. Perhaps not surprising, but it, it, it's clear from your work, even though the group was limited, that uh, evidence of myocardial injury is very common uh, with the TAVI procedure for aortic valve uh, stenosis, and that it does have some significant consequences. Uh, hopefully, uh, as technology improves and experience uh, increases, uh, that'll be less and less. Thanks very much for being with us. For Inside Jack, I'm Tony DeMaria.